The Lord Jesus, in his Sermon on the Mount, famously said, Let your yes be yes, and your no, no. For whatever is more than these is from the evil one. That's Matthew 5.37. The Lord Jesus was very concerned not only that we speak the truth, but that we communicate the truth. Not only that we say things that are true, but that people understand what it is we're saying. It's quite easy to mislead people by saying things in a certain way. And I think it's important for us when we're especially sharing the gospel that we say things that don't mislead people. You could, for example, say, the Lord Jesus was unsaved on the cross. And you would have the scripture, he saved others, himself he could not save. Come down from the cross and we'll believe on you. If the Lord Jesus came down from the cross, there'd be nothing to believe. And so there was this sense in which he was not saved in order to save us. But to give the impression that he died unsaved is not true. He, he committed his spirit to the Father in perfect fellowship with him. So sometimes a phrase may be shocking. It may have some sort of uh, appeal because it shocks people's sensibilities and makes them think. But we need to be careful that when we speak, we not only say what may be technically true, but what actually communicates the truth. And uh, I, I want to tell you a little story about my dad. This is many years ago now. He was having a series of meetings in New Jersey. And uh, he had a very sore leg. And he was uh, thought it was maybe sort of a, a Charlie horse. And he was, he was massaging it, working it, trying to to release this, uh, what he thought was a cramp in his muscle. But uh, when he finally went to the doctor, he got so painful he couldn't walk on it. He went to the doctor. Here it was discovered that he had phlebitis. Now, phlebitis is, a, is an inflammation of the vein. And that in itself may not be dangerous. However, it can sometimes be associated with uh, a deep thrombosis, a, a blood clot. And uh, if that blood clot breaks loose, you can end up with a pulmonary embolism, with the, the blood clot going to your lungs and it could kill you. And uh, so it, it's a very serious thing. Well, anyway, my dad had breakfast in New Jersey. They had him on the plane. He had supper in the hospital in St. Catharines. And uh, so the word went out across the you know, the Christian airways, uh, that Boyd Nicholson had uh, phlebitis and he had gone home. Well, we started getting sympathy cards and checks from people to help pay for the funeral because people thought he had gone home, capital H home, home to heaven. And so, you know, as we communicate with people, Sometimes, especially when we're sharing the gospel with someone, to tell them something and then say, now, do you understand what I said? Could you tell me back in your own words what this means? Like a scripture. I feel that I've communicated this idea, but sometimes when I ask them to tell me back, they didn't get it at all. And one of the ways that we can diagnose that is by asking them, now, for example, if someone uh, professed salvation, they say, I, I've been saved. One question I like to ask them is, well, now, suppose I was the person who was uh, concerned about his soul. I was the one who was feeling guilty in my sin. And I came to you and I asked you, what must I do to be saved? Tell me. Tell me the gospel. And so as they tell you, it's not that you criticize them or contradict them or rebuke them, but you may be able to notice some flaw in their thinking. A fatal flaw, it could be, like a pulmonary embolism. Sometimes there is a, a spot in their thinking that is adversely uh, distorted, and the enemy loves to do this. 
Whatever is more than this, said the Lord Jesus, is of the evil one. So keeping things clear is so crucial. I had a young man say to me one time after he heard the gospel that he was going to go home and confess his sins to the Lord. And that sounds very encouraging, except I knew his religious background. And their religious background is the idea that I have this uh, tree that grows some rotten apples, and I need to collect the apples every week, take them in for confession, and then I can start over again. I'm good to go. But in reality, it's not the fruit that's the biggest problem. It's the root. I don't just need to be saved from sins, but from sin, the root of sin. I commit sins because I'm a sinner, because of the root of sin. I'm not a sinner because I do certain sins. And therefore, a person may be potentially guilty of any sin. And God sees us that way, as potentially in danger of hellfire because of all the sins we could commit if we were in the wrong circumstance. So we need to be saved. But it's not simply a matter of confession. If it were, there would be millions of people in the world who keep doing it. It's not a matter of picking up the rotten apples. It's a matter, the scripture says, of grafting in new life into us. You have received with meekness the engrafted word. And when the word of God gets in, as it were, into the core of our being, and that's what you have to do when you graft, you can't just stick something on the outside. It has to get in where the sap is flowing, where the life is. And then it can produce a new kind of fruit. And this is what happens. When our heart says yes to the word of God, we receive with meekness, the engrafted word, and we grow by it. We produce the fruit of the Spirit because there's a new kind of life within us now. So God help us to be careful. And sometimes we can easily mislead others, not intending to do that. We may say what is true, but we may communicate what is not true. So let's be careful and make sure not only that we say the truth, but that people understand the truth as it is in Jesus. 